here. We're going to cure your fibromyalgia. How about that for an idea? I think that sounds like a great idea because that fibromyalgia <laughs> seems to link off to like not being able to have a memory, go to the bathroom. Um, so the fibromyalgia pain. damages your ability to remember things. Yeah. Okay. And what That's a common thing with other people, but I also got put on Lyrica and it burnt my memory. Okay, so that the drug uh, harms your memory. Yeah, the fire, the uh, Lyrica did, but anybody with fibro has problems with their memory. Right. Okay, because that's a standard symptom of fibro. Exactly. Same with irritable bowel syndrome. Like I go to the bathroom maybe once a week. Oh dear. Yeah, it's horrible. Um, uh, migraines, can't sleep. Most people with fibro can't sleep. I was slept in. Anyways, I get up like three times a night, and I'm up for a long time. Um, what time do you go to bed? Usually I try 9.30, 10 o'clock. And you get up what time in the morning? Oh, see, that's the thing. I wake up at 1, I wake up at 3, and I wake up at 5, and then I'm generally on my bed by about 6.30. Okay. <clears throat> I get the idea. Um, I uh, wake up frequently during the night, but I don't mind it. I mind it. I don't feel like I'm rested when I wake up. Oh, I feel totally fine when I wake up. Oh, um, no. Huh. Interesting. I, I tend to sleep in REM cycles, like, you know, an hour and a half, and then I get up and spend like five minutes doing things, and then I uh, go back to sleep again. It's uh, really nice. To me, anyway. Well, it sounds like I get up like you do, but it's just I don't feel good. Right. I always feel good. And my dreams are great. Oh, really? Yeah, I have great dreams. And, of course, you know, this is all, it makes remembering my dreams very easy because I sort of go over them a little bit in the five-minute window when I go to the bathroom and, you know, do a few things, drink a little water, you know, stuff like that, so... I kind of think about my dream, and I, I continue to enjoy it after I wake up that way. And then I go back to sleep, and usually, you know, I always want to go back into the same dream, but I always have a different one. <laughs> <laughs> I know I had that too, when I wanted to do that. You can't. I start a new one, you know, generally. Now, um, how could you take the hat off? Oh, but that's my hair. Oh, let's see. No. Come on. No. Why? Well, I, Cause I can't. I, can't leave the hat on. I can't see your eyes. Oh, but I don't want to take my hat off. Well, you know, you could, know. you you could tilt it back a little bit. It's a very very bad hair day. I told you I couldn't wash my hair today because I was totally I, like in too much pain. I think that you're oh. paying more attention to your hair than. Oh no, that's terrible! I can't. I'm. I have too much of an ego. Yeah. Um, I want you to. Ha we have to videotape tonight. Really? Let, let me see. Let me see your hand, and I want you to test some. You can put your hat back on if you want. <laughs> you, you can just tilt it back a little bit, it's, so I can see your eyes. That's fine. It's good. This this is better. Better, better, better. Okay. Um, to hold up your hand, and test. Um, is this one of my symptoms? Is this one of my symptoms? Yes. Okay. So tell me a little about that and how it's a symptom. How is the fact that I don't want to wear my hat, that I want to wear my hat a symptom? It's just, uh, you know, caring what people think. Too much. Now, how is that? But it's a, not even caring about that much about what others think. It's about even how I feel about myself. Like, I don't like to not look nice. Okay. Uh, test, is that a symptom? Is that a symptom? Yes. Okay, so how how does that st stack up as a symptom? A symptom of what? You know, what's the uh, what might be generating that symptom? Um, I think that's a long time standing thing that was placed in my head. You know. Mhm. Mm that it looks were really important. You know. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
So why don't you test this? Like, hold up your hand again. Like, hold up your hand when you test so we can see if you're getting a signal. And I want you to test... I get it in my head. Oh, you get? You don't get a signal in your hand? I don't... I, I, at the start, I was getting a signal if I did my hands like this. Uh-huh. When I do this, I just do it because it's kind of cool. You know, I like what you said on your page about, you know, like you see thousands of years ago in other re religions, you yeah, know? Right, right. But I don't get any movement in my hands. I get like a pulse. Okay. But my head just goes like, whew. I get <laughs> tingles and shivers everywhere in my head when I get a yes or something. Okay. Um, so I want you to actually test what you just said a minute ago. Like, did this get planted in my head long ago? Did this get planted in my head long ago? About, you know, looking, how you look. Did this get planted in my head long ago about me having to look pretty? Okay, my face just went. You got it. So my that's, face went all tingled. So that's a signal. Okay, that's a signal. Yeah. So now, um, just say, I'm now removing that from my head. I'm now removing the idea from my head that I have to be pretty. Well, it's not an idea, it's just the thing that's there that you want to remove. You don't have to try to make up something about what it is, see? You can just say, I'm, whatever that is, I'm removing it from my head. It Whatever could, that is, I'm removing that from my head. I mean, it could be a little metal object that the aliens put there. You know, so you, you but whatever it is, you're, I'm, I'm removing that from my head. And see if you get a signal. Well, my head tingled. Okay. So, that, so that's your signal that you've removed it. Now, it is by removing things like this that you cure fibromyalgia. Right. So this is, this, is the, this is the cure for fibromyalgia. That's how you cure it. You find all these things that are wrong with you or, and or stuck inside of you, and you just erase them, kill them, remove them, whatever. And at some point, the symptoms disappear. Uh, do, you, do you feel any different right now? I have a happier feeling. Okay. Well, that's good. That's very like good. Like, I feel like I want to smile, actually, you know? That, that's very good. That's, I, um, I have a very hard time looking at myself, like, in the mirror without clothes on and not be totally, like, oh, my God. Just, just <laughs> well, cool. te test, I want you to test that. Do I have a hard time looking at myself without clothes in the mirror? Do I have a hard time of looking at myself without clothes in the mirror? Anything? No. Well, maybe you just cured it then. Oh, cool. See? I'm good that. So what happens when you cure something is that some, some, it's gone. It's not there anymore. And sometimes you cure a whole bunch of things at once that we're connected to it without actually ever thinking about them. Curing, cool. curing one thing can cause you to cure a lot of things. And so again, this is how you cure fibromyalgia. Because fibromyalgia is a complex disease that has multiple causes that all enable each other. Yeah. And you're now taking out, you're chipping away at the causes of this fibromyalgia. Right. And the thing to do is just, like, what I'm teaching you here is a simple method of challenging yourself at every turn and testing everything that you think or, you know, say and just test whether it's true or not or, yeah, basically, you're, is that the way it is, you know, you're testing that. That's cool because as you're talking, my head is tingling like crazy. Yeah. So it's like I'm liking it. Yeah. So you walk around all day doing that and your fibromyalgia will decrease and decrease and disappear at some point. Now there are, um, you know, physical causes of the fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, you know you're going to have to erase those too. But let, well, we should test that. Um, are there physical causes of this fibromyalgia? Are there physical causes of my fibromyalgia? See, I, I'm get, I'm not getting anything. Well, maybe there, maybe I was wrong. See, I could say something to you that would be totally, totally wrong. Yeah, but what if my signals aren't working? Uh, I think they were working a minute ago, and you just cured something, so they're probably working. So, maybe there aren't any physical causes of the fibromyalgia. Well, when I tested some of my bodies, it was my emotional body that was so wounded. Uh huh. And uh, that makes a lot of sense to me because. Uh, it was a lot of mind stuff when I was growing up that was difficult, you know, that I uh -huh. went through. Yeah. I got hit by a car when I was 15, but I had already had all the symptoms before that of fibromyalgia from when I was really young. Right. When I was like six years old, seven years old, I couldn't go to the bathroom for a month. Mm hmm And migraines and stuff like that. But um, I do get pain. But I don't know if it's that something physical happened to me that brought up the fibromyalgia. I think it's something emotionally. What do you, uh, what's your diet like? Not, not so good. Like, I drink a lot of water. I uh, eat fruit. Um, but I do have like lean cuisines. Uh, um, I'll make pasta with tomato sauce and stuff like that. But... I used to be really, really good with my diet, and I went back to having sugar, you know, so I know I have to kick out the sugar. When you I, say you were really good, like what kind of foods did you eat when you were really good? When I was really good, I was eating just fruit until noon, and my tea was herbal teas with uh, honey and uh, lemon, and then in the afternoon or at nighttime, I'd be eating protein more protein, like fish. I, I, I made a chicken soup all the time with a ton of vegetables, um, or fish, or uh, stuff like that, really. Uh, whole grains? Whole grains, I still do that now in the morning. I eat whole grain bagels. Um, it's really my tea and my sugar. Um, even my pasta, I eat whole grain uh, pasta. It's just, um, I could do a little bit better than I've been doing, but I'm not as bad as I used to be, that's for sure. And I mostly, I get a lot of pain when uh, the seasons change or when the weather changes or smells or... Right. Test this question. Because um, you, you were saying you have chronic fatigue syndrome. Yeah. So test, am I hosting the Epstein-Barr virus? Can you repeat that? Ask if you're hosting the Epstein-Barr virus. Am I ho I'm asking if I'm hosting the Epstein... Epstein-Barr. Epstein-Barr virus? Yeah. Am I hosting the Epstein-Barr virus? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. Yes, yes. Okay, so that, um, that would cause chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay. So you have to kill that virus. So then I take out the Epstein-Barr virus? Yeah. And I replace it with the presence of God? No, you don't replace it with anything. Oh, I thought you had to replace it with the presence of God or something. Nope. Nope. Oh. Just kill it. Um, so just say I'm removing the Epstein-Barr virus from all my bodies and see when I'm you get a signal. I'm removing the Epstein-Barr virus from all my bodies. And actually int intend to kill the virus. Hey. Intend to kill the virus. I remove the Epstein-Barr virus from all my bodies with the intent to kill the virus. If you take it out, it will die. 
I feel a little tingle in my head. Okay. Perfect. That's that's an example of how you would do it. And then and then you would che- you would check through your body. So I'm like, uh, I want to get a pen so I can write that down. The Epstein Barr virus, because my memory is so bad, I forget everything. Okay, right. Did you forget where you put your pencil? What? <laughs> Did you forget where you put your pencil? <laughs> no, it's in the living room. Well, let, we leave it for now. Okay. Okay. Let's just. I can you turn the sound down on your uh, speakers? so that it doesn't feed back. Maybe I'll just try to talk softer because I am... No, no, you're not the problem. The problem is my voice is feeding back. So you need to turn your speakers down. You, can t- you should talk louder. That will also help. Yeah, you're talking to somebody who doesn't know how to use computers very well. I see, but my mic is on and... So you don't know how to turn the sound down. No. <laughs> Is this your computer? It's my computer. But you don't know how to turn down the sound. Exactly. (laughs) I don't use Skype. I don't use... I go on my computer to go on Facebook and emails, and that's about it. You know, you remind me a little bit of Meg Ryan. Everybody says that. (laughs) Yeah, I know. You know, you have all her gestures and everything. It's very funny. Really, eh? Maybe you're from the same part of the world or something. Well, I think, yeah, I think we all come from a certain linear, you know? Yeah, like our right. Our souls come from, like, I have this idea that there's all these linear lines and, you know, you all come sliding down and you're all, like, very closely lined, but there's many, many of them. Right. Well, um, okay, but anyway, you just got an example of what it is to kill the Epstein-Barr virus. Now, Epstein-Barr. T- test this question. Can the Epstein-Barr virus uh, cause fibromyalgia? Can the Epstein-Barr virus cause fibromyalgia? Yes. Okay. So that could, that could be a cause of fibromyalgia. Okay. Okay, first of all, you wrote down Epstein-Barr, right? Epstein-Barr. Okay. You can look that up in uh, Wikipedia. Now, I want you to um, go to the health food store and buy a laxative to take. I'll recommend the laxative. It's called Nature's Way um, Aloe Lax. It's made Nature's with... Nature's Way... Yeah, that's the... Aloe? Comp- Aloe Lax. Wax. Aloe Lax. It's a laxative. And it's, okay. it's very gentle and pleasant to take. And also, aloe is good for you anyway. So... Um, it helps uh, other things too. So, um, so take that and create regularity where you uh, go to the bathroom every day at least once. Okay, nature's way um, acts. Now, um, here. Okay, ho- hold up your hand again, and I want you to ask: Can candida cause fibromyalgia? Can candida cause fibromyalgia? Yes. So, see, actually, um, you have this disease that's caused by a group of things. You know, Epstein-Barr can cause it, and you have that, and Candida can cause it, and you have that, and so on. There's, you know, it's there's just... Uh, any one of these things could cause you to have a fibromyalgia attack. So, right. so you might cure one but not the other, and you'd still have fibromyalgia. Right. So see, the thing about this is that you can feel better, but you might still have fibromyalgia. You have to cure all the causes. Right. Not just one or two of the causes. Test if there are there emotional causes of this fibromyalgia. I know that without asking. Okay, are there emotional causes to this fibromyalgia? Oh yeah. Now, um, is is uh, one of those emotional causes? Uh, uh, is it based on trauma? 
is it um on the emotional cause for fibromyalgia is one of them based on trauma Not getting anything. Okay, so maybe it isn't. Um, well, uh, you can always test it again later, but maybe it's not, you know. We have plenty to focus on here. So, uh, you, you know, get yourself some corn and some Angus beef and, you know, and uh, you can't eat any sugar whatsoever. Nothing. No right. honey. No honey, no sugar, no cane sugar. Not even honey, not even like pure, pure honey. Nothing. Oh. No sugar. Okay. Uh, Can we like take that out of me? The addiction for for uh, addictive behaviors like sugar and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Can you want to you want to test for that, and also test this question: Do I crave sugar? Do I crave sugar? No? Yes, I do. You do. Okay, I'm remo yeah. I'm removing the craving for sugar. I'm removing the craving for sugar. Completely, totally, 100,000%. <laughs> Gone. Good, okay. Well then, uh, whenever it comes up, just remove the craving. I uh, generally have green tea after dinner with nothing in it. And I get, I have some, I have a, this interesting little blend I made, because I, I get three, four different kinds of green tea. And I, this particular one, I mix them. <laughs> they just got all mixed together in the pot, because I ran out of one, so I added some other ones. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. So I have green tea, and I keep a pot of green tea on the stove, and I just heat it up and eat it, drink it. And you just drink it naturally. Yeah. I also get that, that twig tea, roasted twig tea, which is green tea, but it's roasted green tea twigs. <laughs> okay. That's, I've been drinking that for years, like 30 years. Um, okay, there's something else I wanted to tell you that you're going to really have to understand, which is that curing things costs money. So that right. means that you need to make money. I know. Or, I need to get a job. Or attract money or do something with money so that you can use it because it's not just buying, you know, subscriptions to our web college or, you know, donating to the Cure Drive. It costs money to buy supplements and to buy the right foods and to buy, um, you know, sm a smartphone so that you can listen to the wander around listening to the movies and there's just so many things to buy so to then i take out of my out of all my bodies i take out poverty you could try you could do that that's a good thing to do um test this question uh hold this up um do i have poverty in any of my bodies do i have poverty in any of my bodies Very little. Okay. Um, is that an immune dysfunction? Is that an immune dysfunction? Yes. So poverty is an immune dysfunction, and it sure is, because it opens people up to disease, and there is a huge amount of poverty in this world. Like probably four billion people are living at the poverty level on this planet. Yeah. And they don't even have like drinking water. Yeah. So that's poverty. You know, that's what it, you know, you should feel rich. <laughs> I do though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm very I'm very blessed to be living the way I'm living and I and I get what I get a month is ridiculous. So I'm very I'm very blessed. I I'm very well taken care of by God and everything. Um, who do you live with? I live by myself with my dog and 
my two other dogs come sometime of the week. I share them with my ex-boyfriend. Oh, so you have an ex-boyfriend who took the other dogs. Yeah, right. shared custody. <laughs> shared custody of pooches. Well, that sounds all right. Yeah, they're my angels. Yeah, that sounds all right. And I have a boyfriend right now, and he's, he's a great guy. That sounds good, too. Um, well, I don't know if we, 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 you know, sometime we should talk more about your boyfriend and so on. Um, but for right now, I think... We've done a lot, and uh, you have, but do you understand the basic thing that I'm sending you off to do, which is what we did in this movie, and I'm going to put this movie up on YouTube, and you, could, you should watch your movie whenever the, a movie of you goes up, watch the movie, because you will see things in the movie that will be much louder and clearer to you than they were right. when they were happening. It's just so much easier when you have that objectivity, you know, you're sort of listening to this interaction rather than being in the middle of it. And you're going to ask questions. You're gonna test things you say and things that you think. And then if you find a symptom, you're gonna ask, you're gonna test, you know, think of things that might cause it and test each one and remove them. And you're going to remove, and if you crave sugar, you're going to remove that. Uh, if, if you feel sick, uh, check yourself for the Epstein-Barr virus, for example, and kill it. And uh, also, um, you know, go, go through, we'll do this next time, okay? We'll go through your bodies and we'll take the viruses or whatever's in them out of each body, okay? Right on. Okay, and yeah, I'm excited about that. Okay, the, the thing you don't want to get stuck in is the idea that you can hump through this on your own. Okay. Okay, because you, you know, I have seen very few people who could ever do that, and an awful lot of people who couldn't. And, uh, I also notice that when you're by yourself, you tend to drop the ball. You're the kind of person, the way, the way you have impressed me, is that you need to be called, you know, to, you know, like you need people like your brother, I guess your, Jean is- I need a coach. Yeah, 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 you need a coach. Well, coaching is $5,400. <laughs> so, so you do need a coach, but you may not be able to afford that. But fortunately, there are people like Jean, your brother, right? He's your brother? My brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law, who, you know, these people... Sister pe Catherine was on tonight with Barbara. Yeah, so these people call you and they say, hey, come on, get in here. Or, or here I am, you know, on making a movie with you. And I say, well, get yourself to the meeting, you know. And you need that. Like, you need people telling you, do this, do that and reminding you and, and... I'm not crazy about that, you know? I want, you know, some people just automatically are, they go and they do and stuff like that and they motivate themselves, you know? And I wanna be able to do that for myself and not rely on other people. You might be able to do it with some things, but I would say that with something that's important, you shouldn't be taking chances. You should be trying to do both. You should be motivating yourself at all times. And yeah. at the same time, that part of that motivation should be, you know, get connect, continuing to connect with all these people. Yeah. And, and also structuring my day, you know, about like I did the, um, the prayers before I came on and I really felt lighter and better afterwards. Okay. And you know what? I have to tell you, uh, Very today smart. I had this horrible pain down the side of my face. Right. And uh, after I did the prayers, it lightened up. And then now after talking with you, I have nothing. Great. So, yeah. so you're actually curing physical things and you can do it. There's no question about it. And you should be accepting of yourself. Like if you're not like, you know, very, very uh, self-starting, <laughs> then 
you know, you should accept that about yourself and, you know, encourage other people to start you and connect, okay. connect with other people in every way that you can. Like I can post on my page and post on yours and Greg's and just say, ask people if they'll want to join me on Skype yeah. and talk. Or, or um, on anybody else's page. And, and also on your page, that's right, and on your page. And, uh, and people could share where you post that and send it out. And, you know, you could get, you know, just get involved with people, you know, like, you know, get, get into conversations. Well, on, on the post there that I wrote on my page where I said, you know, I'm going to be curing all these different things. Everybody just stick with me and, and I'll be reporting how it all goes. Um, there was a friend of mine who posted and he said, Barbie says, a lot of your symptoms sound like uh, fluoride poisoning. And he said, you should check that out. Have you ever heard of that? Sure, test this question. Do I have fluoride poisoning? I'm looking at my hand on the screen. <laughs> Do I have fluoride poisoning? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, I, oh, yes. st I stopped using fluoride toothpaste about 30 years ago <laughs> when I realized, you know, what, that it might not be the best thing. Because, you know, you can get high in any of these minerals and it, see, oh, there's a lot of minerals that are good for you up to a point and then they're, they become poisons, like copper is one. You need copper, but if you get too much of it, it's a poison. And if you don't have enough of it, you get a lot of wrinkles. So you mean using my toothpaste can give me a poisoning of fluoride? Yeah. And it can make all these symptoms? Uh, let's put it this way. We've identified a whole bunch of causes, in, in, and one of them was just fluoride poisoning. Like you identified the Epstein-Barr virus, candida, and high fluoride. Um, you could also test, here, let's try something else. Uh, hold up your hand. Do I have high cadmium? Do I have what? Do I have high, a high level of cadmium in my system? Cadmiums? I'm not getting that clearly. Cadmium is an element. It's on the periodic table. Cadmium. 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 C-A-D-M-I. Cadmium. U-M. Do I have cadmium? Yep. Okay, how about, how about lead? How about what? Lead. Do I have lead? Lead poisoning or lead? Uh, high, <laughs> high, high, really high levels of lead in my system. Do I have high levels of lead? Yes. Okay, stay. Don't, don't, don't write it down. Just let's do the next one. How about mercury? Do I have high levels of mercury? No. Okay, good. Um, how about? Uh, do I have? Uh, what's the? Uh, oh, well, you could write cadmium down before you forget it, but. There's another one I wanted to test you for, but I can't remember what it is now. Oh, you see now I forgot the one. <laughs> I forgot the one that I was. I had a high level of. Uh, cadmium and lead. Okay, high lead. And high cadmium. Right, and fluoride. Oh yeah, and fluoride. Yeah. So that goes away just not using my fluoride toothpaste anymore? Um, actually, uh, write this down. I'm not totally sure this will work. Oh, the other one is, uh, test this question. Do I have high levels of aluminum? Do I have high levels of aluminum? No. Okay, good. Um, you should definitely not use fluoride toothpaste, but um, you know what I use to brush my teeth? I use Dr. Bronner's soap, peppermint castile soap, which you can get at the health food store. Write it down, Dr. Bronner's peppermint castile soap. 
Dr. Bronner's? Yeah, Dr. Bronner's Peppermint Castile Soap. Peppermint Cast soap. Cast Yeah, Peppermint, it's Castile Soap. I was the only patient that my dentist had who had absolutely no mouth bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> I had zero mouth bacteria. He he used to scrape our the you know the plaque on our teeth and put it on a slide and project it on a TV screen. And I killed all my mouth bacteria with Dr. Bronner's soap. Wow. What about baking soda? Uh, you could try it, but uh, the be the the Bronner's is the one I know is will will eradicate. Baking soda is good though for brushing your teeth. Definitely. I've used it at times. Okay. So we're trying to, like, remove the toxicity in your symptom, in your system, I mean, sorry. And, uh, all right, so this is, these are things to remember, you know, the, you know that... Uh, um, and you were saying not to, but I mean, all day long, you said not to do it on your own, but all day long when things bother me, I can ask, you know... Ask any questions, questions and I can try to take it out by myself, right? You want to be taking things out all day because right? because there's a lot to remove there and if you do get it out then you will be you will cure your fibromyalgia. So the more that's there that you remove the more likely it is that you'll end your fibromyalgia and the sooner it will end and the less and right. the, and the fewer symptoms you'll have. I also do this thing, I know we, we need to get off, and I'm really thankful, and thank you very much for your time and doing this with me. But there's another one that I, I, I kind of do, and I've been doing it ever since I was a kid, I freeze. Like, I just, I just freeze. Like, my whole body just goes, like, in a freeze motion. You know, like, when you go, <gasps> you're scared? Yeah, you go, right. Test that's the, tightening? Here, test this question. Is that a panic attack? Is that a panic attack? No, definitely not. Okay. No, because I'm just tense all the time, sitting or stuff like that. And then I realize I'm tense, and then I try to relax myself. And I've been like that ever since I was a kid. Okay, test this. Is it stress? Is it a stress response? Is it a stress response? Nope. Well, you're going to have to think about more questions to ask about it. I guess so, right? Yeah. Okay, I've got, I've got it for now, like, what, what about the questions and about... When it happens, uh, I ask questions about it. Yeah. Like, just te when it happens, just, like, test a question about it. It will probably yeah. clear up. And then I should expect that these things... Because you've talked before about things being gone and then coming back and stuff like that. For me... It's like, you know, when, it's, when in the Bible it says about if you have uh, faith of a mustard seed? Uh -huh. I have faith of a mountain. I believe in this 100%. I know that this is actually possible. And I believe that, to me, in my thinking, that once I take something out, it should be permanently gone. Well, you don't have to believe it because you've been doing it. So, <laughs> so, so since you're doing it, belief is not, belief is an immune dysfunction. And it's not the same thing as faith. Faith is not belief. Faith is a like it's a kind of a state of being, where you it's it's a type of knowingness. That's it, a knowing. Like yeah. I've always known that we can cure. I just never got to the right place to do it. Like <clears throat> the other thing that happens to me, and I'm going to keep you one more minute because I have you, and I'm going to push it. <laughs> yeah, right. Is the one that the one that bothers me the most is whenever I. I would work on somebody like massage them or uh, there's different things that I like I can do and I, I, I would get their sickness I, it literally it would come into me and I'd be in bed for a couple of days or <laughs> I'd literally get the illness itself or um, I couldn't do the work the healing work that I wanted to do because it always, I would always absorb it mm -hmm. so I'm just wondering how do I I, this is the thing I've been looking for my whole life is well, like even the even the energy and the light from the the computer 
makes me very, very tired. Like, it affects me greatly. Well, test, um, test this question. Um, when, uh, when, I'm, when I connect with somebody's density, should I absorb it? When I connect with somebody's what? Density. The density. Should I, should I absorb it? Should I absorb people's density? Should I absorb people's density? No. Okay. Well then, don't absorb it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> well, you can just put up a shield against it or say, okay, I'm now removing this person's density from me or any one of That's a number. That's what I think I'll have to do is after I work. Well, no, I remember on one of your videos, you said there was somebody in a class, she was a teacher, and she was saying that she could see the sickness of somebody like the uh, flu virus or the cold virus, and she would take it out of them before it even got to her. So if I knew what it was in the person, then I could automatically take it out. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Um, you, w one thing that will cure you is taking things out of other people. One thing that will cure me is taking things out of other people. Yeah, you can take viruses out of them. Yeah. So do that. Uh, that's my dream of my lifetime is to be able to cure people. That's, so that's do, everything I've ever wanted to do. So do that. Practice all this yeah. stuff. What? There's plenty more to practice too. Uh, but but yeah. anyway, okay, so we'll stop now and you know